Okay, so what you are going to start off looking at in this lesson is what we call radian measure. Um, all you're going to do is look at how to convert from degrees to radians and vice versa, and then in class together we'll look at arc length. So our goal is to convert from degrees to radian measure. This is not something you've probably heard before. And then vice versa, we'll go from radian measure back to degrees. So let's first start to talk about what radians are. Okay, so what is radian measure? Radian measure of an angle, and this is just another way to measure an angle. This is the length of the arc on the unit circle that is intercepted by the angle. Okay, so we need to think back a little bit to geometry class when we are talking about arcs and intercepted angles. Um, so let's, let's look at this a little bit. The circumference, we're going to start with the entire circle, okay? So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, where the radius is r. Okay, so what we're going to say now is that we know the radius of the unit circle is 1. So let's substitute 1 in for r in our circumference circle. So that would just be c equals 2 pi. So if we're talking about what one radian is, one radian is 1 over 2 pi of the circle. That's about 57 degrees. You can kind of look over here at the picture. We know that the radius is 1. So one radian is where you have one unit of the circle intercept. So the question is, why do we use radian measure? Radians make it simpler for calculations on the circle to happen or to carry out. calculations on circles easier. Where you really see this is in calculus. So some of you will end up in calculus and you'll really be using radians then. At this point guys, for your purpose in Algebra 2, what we all we really want you to be able to do is to convert. If you get to pre-cal or calculus and you can convert from radians to degrees and have maybe a little bit of an understanding on what that is, we're good to go. Um, you'll have a little bit more in depth on what a radian is and why we use them and so on later on. But if we can convert, then we're doing pretty good. If we are going degrees to radians, we are going to multiply by pi over 180. And if we are going radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that. We will multiply by 180 over pi. Okay. 
So the first few examples we are just going to convert from degrees to radians in the first three examples. So in the first three examples we are going to be multiplying by pi over 180. Uh, you'll probably want your calculators handy here. So we'll take 40 and I always put that over 1 and I'm multiplying that by pi over 180. So you can use your calculators to simplify 40 over 180. That simplifies to 2 over 9. So this is 2 pi over 9 radians. For negative 150, let's put negative 150 over 1 times pi over 180. Simplify negative 150 over 180. That simplifies to negative 5 over 6. So this is negative 5 pi over 6 radians. I want you to go ahead and try the last one, negative 120, on your own. Do that now. All right, what we should have gotten was negative 2 pi over 3 radians. Negative 120 over 180 simplifies to negative 2 thirds, so negative 2 pi over 3 radians. So now what we're going to do is go backwards. So now we're going from radians to degree. So we'll take the 3 pi, I still put that over 1, but now we are going to multiply by 180 over pi. So right away, your pi's cancel, and at this point, we're just multiplying straight across. 3 times 180 is 540 degrees. For the next one, we already have 4 pi over 3 as a fraction. I'm multiplying by 180 over pi. Again, the pi's cancel. 180 over 3 is 60. So then straight across, 4 times 60 is 240. Go ahead and stop the video. I would like you to try this last one, number 6, on your own. We should have had negative 120 degrees. So that's all I want you to see at this point. In class next time, we'll look at the rest of this.